So we're one and one. I thought we should have been two and zero. Oh. I predicted we would go two and zero. Oh. I left in the middle of the second match, feeling pretty good we were going to go two and zero. Oh. We did not, and that's very unfortunate because NIP is probably the worst team that we're going to play from this point forward through the rest of the major. So if we were two and zero, we had the chance to play either Spirit or Copenhagen Flames. I'm not sure exactly how that worked out. I know Navi is up there too, but I'm not sure how that ranking would have worked. But we had the chance to play one of them. Now we're playing FaZe, who's going to be a very tough opponent. And then we're going to have a 2 and one match who will also be against most likely a very tough opponent. So the road definitely got much, much harder now. But I do believe that the team showed how they play in general in these two matches. They showed on the T side how they can change it up from going slow to very fast to going from very fast in a round to then slowing way down and methodical, just kind of the way that they change tempo throughout rounds and especially throughout a half. And I think that they showed their potential for refragging and just their general fragging ability, especially Inters and Axile. I think both of them played very well. Um, I do think that the team missed a lot of shots, especially Shiro had a very poor day. He only had 10 op kills over the two maps, and he missed a lot of shots he normally hits. In the NIP match, there was a number of rounds where if he just gets one, everything changes. But it wasn't able to do that. It wasn't able to have a lot of impact. He did have that insane solo M4 round, which won that map. So that was incredible. But other than that, I would say that he didn't... He wasn't able to have a lot of impact, especially with the op. I also thought fragging wise, Naphne wasn't at his best. And there was also a couple times where they would execute and they would get counter utilityed or something would happen. And he would end up way far in front of everyone else on the execute, like in the middle of the bomb site while everyone else is still at the entrance. And he would just die and there's no potential for any trades, no potential for anything else to happen. So definitely think that that along with his fragging could have been better. So Virtus Pro, we beat Virtus Pro and One thing this team did that I noticed right away was that they did a great job of using their utility even when they know that the other team is on an eco. This is something that historically Cloud9 has struggled with. I don't know if they just try to execute faster or they're trying to like save the money or nades knowing that they're on pistols or whatever, but especially the Colossus lineup, they would not use their utility versus pistols and just go in dry and end up losing a ton of rounds like that, just dropping a lot of nades on the ground. Now, this did happen one time that I remember specifically in NIP where they go top mid and they're crunching top mid with four or five of their players. They have four smokes, three Molotovs. They use none of them. So when they pop top mid, that's just one flash they use. They end up getting peaked from arch side, completely free, die to an op. They die to one player who's up on the railing, like not balcony, but like the railing. They just didn't use any of that, where if they had a smoke over towards arch side, then they can't get opt in the back. They can just worry about one side, or even if they flash that way or molly, any of that kind of stuff. They had tons of utility. They didn't use it, and it ended up costing them that round. But that was the only time I remember seeing that, and that was something that used to happen constantly with the Colossus lineup. So that's definitely good to see them still be methodical, still use their utility, all that kind of stuff, even on the eco rounds. I also thought that... versus Virtus Pro, their CT side was much more frantic than what we've seen historically, or what I've seen historically. I thought they could have been better at trading. It felt much more, I don't know, frantic is the right word. Like things were just happening. They were moving way too fast. They weren't in like their perfect sync like they usually are. Now this could have been due to like me being panicked the whole time as the game was getting so close and just finally having the Cloud9 lineup back, their first match, I'm sitting there all stressed. It could have just been me, but I just kind of had that feeling where when I was watching demos, their refrags and the way they moved together and all that stuff seemed so fluid, whereas this CT side felt a little bit more frantic, Where, whereas they still won, they still ended up with a good CT side. That's just kind of like the feeling I got. Now, the last three rounds, Shiro obviously popped off, but like I said, he was having an off game the whole time couldn't get any kills with the op or do really anything of note with it. This match shouldn't have been as close as it was. We should have been up 13-8 instead of 11-10 when we lost that 4v2. And then we had an advantage the next round as well versus their less weapons, and that got torn apart. So we should have had both of those 
those rounds. They should have had no money. The game should have been over at that point. But instead, we lost those rounds. PM 11-10, ended up grinding it out. So it shouldn't have been as close as it was, but that did happen. There's also sometimes they forgot to check some angles, which I thought is very unlike this team. Like early on when Yukindar was up on apps with the pistol, or later when they didn't check under balcony. This is when Nafani actually ran out. I believe it was Nafani. Anyway, they run out and they don't check under palace end up dying and then two other times when they died at tetris although that's a little bit more understandable as it was later in the round they're kind of coming in it wasn't like a full execute they're coming in from connector so that's a little bit different on both sides i think they did a great job holding mid control on t side they used the new bench a lot to get kills on a bunch of rounds and they never really let vp get comfortable mid on vps ct side like on this play in round seven you can see that um, Nafani dies top mid, then Hobbit is also top mid. So the connector player steps out to try and frag him. Shiro's then watching that guy connector and kills him. Then Axile hops on the bench to kill the player on Cat, who's then trying to peek out and get Shiro. And it's just like a complete manipulation of the CTs in that moment. I do disagree with the two times that Axile went hunting for players. One was on round four where he gave them a free AK. They know they're on pistols. He has no other CT player with him. And he's just going around trying to get kills. The best he could have got really was an MP9 away from them. The second time he did this, they were all on just straight pistols. So I think the risk reward of that is just not there. Because if he kills them, they lose an MP9. Not that big of a deal. But if he dies like he did that first time, they get the AK. That's obviously a much bigger deal. I think you just let them go in the situations or you bring a trade partner so that they don't get the AK just something like that because it's just too it's too risky and the second time when he did it and they were literally on a f- complete full eco only bad things can come from that there's no reason to go kill them versus NIP we start off hot won the pistol got five straight we're feeling good we had a good execute and trading on round four towards a but then the missed plant on round six was huge because Shiro had time. He had the space. He could have pulled it off. And I think that if he gets that plant down, he probably wins. So that was kind of a bummer. And then round seven is what I said earlier, where they pop out top mid with just a single flash. They have all this utility. They get crunched. They lose that round. Um, Shiro, again, only six op kills in this map. Couldn't really get it going. Missing shots and apps. He would re-aggress sometimes, but not be able to get a kill with it. Just struggled to have impact. Mm-hmm. Round eight, they played too passively. They didn't use a single piece of utility towards top mid. And they also didn't force any smokes out of B. So when they ended up going B, just kind of rolling out a banana, which is where they spent the entire round, NIP has a smoke ready. They throw it down. They can't do anything through it, end up saving. This was by far... The most saving I think I've ever seen on any T side. Um, so that was kind of interesting to watch. A lot of just, I don't know, wanting to keep their stuff because it becomes a 3v5 fairly quickly, which I guess I understand. Um, there was two times when NIP ended up with one HP. I think this round easily could have easily could have swung Cloud9's way. There were so many times where there was just like a miss spray or someone living on one HP, it felt like all of the all of the borderline plays were all going their way. And like I said, Shira was just so off. And I think that if you played this same match ten times, I think we win eight or nine of them. Even this one where I felt like we were not in our best form. There was many times we could have taken it. We got owned by flashes on A, so that was credit to NIP. Every time they're executing A, we were just so blind all the time, which made the trades hard because everyone was blind. So that was really good play by them. We still were able to hold off a few of them, but I do think that both these games showed the fragging power of Inters, Exile, and Hobbit. I think that was on display fully. All of them played pretty well, but there was just too many whiffs, not enough impact with the op, 
and just not enough playing well. I think that if you play that exact same scenario out with the normal aim and everything that we have, again, I think many of those rounds are completely different because a player is dead instead of an op shot missed or an advantage is taken or they don't live on one HP or whatever, etc. So tomorrow we play versus FaZe. FaZe is always so good and Kerrigan is so smart and with us playing more passive, I think that's something Kerrigan can punish. So it's going to be a very good match. Hopefully, well, they only played one Mirage game, but we watched a lot of Mirage today. So hopefully it's a different map besides Mirage just to make it more fun. But I think we can win. I think that's probably close to a 50-50 because FaZe is pretty freaking good. So hopefully we can win that because going 1-2 would also be tough because then there's a chance for playing Vitality for our tournament lives. But this will be our last best of one. And then we'll have best of threes, which I think will thrive in best of threes. I still think there's no chance we don't make the playoffs. I think we played poorly today and we're a 16-14 away from being 2-0. So I think it's only up from here. Team's going to be fine. The very first maps of the major, we're going to be good.